Hello and welcome to the Meditation Conversation. I'm your host, Kara Goodwin, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Coach Lee Hopkins. Coach Lee is a transgender man who helps people create lasting friendships. After struggling with loneliness most of his life, he's tried various ways to resolve it, including moving across the U.S. to find his tribe and fit in. He's learned that the key to creating meaningful relationships is not fitting in or finding your tribe. It's about attracting your vibe. So he'll show us how this is possible for everyone. So welcome, Coach Lee. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me, Kara. I'm really excited to have this conversation too. So tell us a bit about your journey and how you ended up in this position of helping so many other people in their journeys. Yeah, well, I've found that most of my life I've been struggling to make friendships. I grew up in a small town in Ohio, and I noticed that just about everybody had some kind of close friend friendship or or something. And I feel like I was on the outside, but I always I was always told that I need to find my tribe. I'm just not in the right place. So I go to college and I meet different people from different places, backgrounds, even some international students. And I'm like, this is it. This is going to be amazing. I'm going to find the people that really like me and I really like them. And I've made some nice friends, but it still wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. So then I figured, well, it's the entire state of Ohio. I have to leave that place. I'm going to go to California and I'm going to connect with some people in California. And now, sure enough, logical. I did. Yeah. What's that? I, that's logical. <laughs> I, would think, I would think the same thing, to be honest. So I, the, being that I'm in Indiana, I can completely, the, <laughs> I can completely you, relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, how even has this theme, nothing to see since 1803. So. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't come for me, Ohio winds, please. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to the California and I found the same thing that I found in Ohio. It was oh, like this connection and, and not the close friendships that I thought I, I needed, that I thought I was going to get from that. But then I thought, well, okay, there were a lot of people who started to know me in California. I had like a little mini circle of, of friends and people who knew me but they didn't really know me, know me. So I thought, well, I was hiding something from them. And I thought it was the fact that I wanted to transition, but I didn't know how to talk to people about that. I was afraid to share that with others. So then instead of talking about it or doing anything in California about it, I just left the entire state. I had an opportunity to leave. So I moved to Chicago where I am now. I met the trans people, the queer people that gave me the language to put into to to make this uh, transition reality for me. I had the job that paid for for the transition. I had everything that I needed. Even Caitlyn Jenner was coming up at this time. So I had all the acceptance and and I, I make this transition and I still feel absolutely lonely. I feel terrible. I feel like I still can't be my authentic self with people. I started to hide the fact that I was trans and I just felt so just like what's what's going on? What's going on here? Mm. And so I realized that I didn't have the answer. The only thing I really knew what is it was that I was the problem and I wasn't making the friendships, but I didn't have the answer. So I went to therapy to get some insight and I discovered that there is something that I'm doing because I'm in charge of my own behavior. I'm in charge of my own feelings and how I how I show up in the world. So there's something that I'm doing that might be causing disconnect with other people. And once I figured out exactly what it was, I was like, this is great. This feels great. And so that's how I got into coaching. I felt that for myself. I started to connect with other people. I started to be more open. And there were specific actions and behaviors that I was doing. And I realized that I can share that with other people because it feels so great why not share it with other people? Everybody wants to feel connected and less lonely. And so this is why I just can't stop talking about it. That is amazing. And I, I really commend you for doing that work because it, it's really brave to be mm. like, wait a minute. Okay. It's, it's so much easier to be like, it's them, it's them, it's them. Oh, you yeah. know, it's the outside. It's, it's where I am. It's the, you know, it's my family, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. And it is like, as we continue to grow, I mean, in general, just across the board, whatever it is that we continue to bump up against 
in our life and our journey, it it's so it's so easy for us to be like, here it is again. Why are people so like this? You know, exactly. And, and then it's like, wait a minute, to be able to have the maturity and the the commitment to your own to creating the life that you want. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's so important it's so brave to be like wait a minute i need to turn this focus in you know i've got to look inside mm-hmm. of me and make some changes in here so Absolutely. it's really, really commendable is there anything that you want to share in terms of kind of what you needed to um what what sort of was kind of that clicking point, that aha, where it was like, oh, this is something I can do within me to change the external in terms of being able to connect with people easier. Absolutely. You know, there was a, it was a process to try and figure out exactly what that was. I just knew initially from therapy that I had to do something different. And I thought I was doing something different from moving from Ohio to California to Chicago. And I also moved within those places in between, like on average, I guess every 15 months I was moving somewhere else because of course, Kara, it was the people. Everybody else was causing my problem, (laughs) not me. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Everybody else. So I was like, well, what could I do differently? Okay, well, I'm not moving again. Chicago is like Mm -hmm. the second largest city in the United States. I'm not moving again. There's no reason for me to move again. What am I doing? What can I do? What can I change? And it started with the little things. I'm telling you the really small things that change. Like, well, one thing I was doing was moving from place to place to place. And when I started to really put it together, I'm like, well, I never make my place feel like home. Why don't I do that? Why don't I put some pictures on my wall and start believing that I'm going to move out right away? Then there's there's something else I don't do. Um, I don't cook for myself. I'll cook for people if I know they're coming over and I might try and find something extravagant, but I don't treat myself well. Maybe I can do something about that. And it was like the unsuspecting things that made me feel better about myself so that I can. The unsuspecting things. Yeah. It was like just the little mindful things that I've done for myself. And it made me feel better about myself. And that made me feel like people saw me better or I could talk to, I feel better about talking to other people about me because I felt more comfortable with myself. And it was just one of the things that, that I did for myself. So it was a change within It was all directed at me. Like no one else had to do anything different in my life. It was me and the way I treated myself and I felt better about myself and the connections that I made or talking to other people. I felt better with that. And so that in therapy also, having somebody being able to help me process and see that with me um, helped me prepare for one of these big events that happened in my life because I realized that I was just afraid of rejection. It was a rejection I was afraid of. So I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran and I tried to make sure that I would create a space in which no one would reject me. So I turned into a people pleaser and realizing that I don't want to do that either. That doesn't feel really comfortable or connecting. And so I'm going to get to this big change that happened in my life where I transitioned. So this is the story I was, I've already transitioned. I am as you see me now. I was as you see me now. This is about five or six years ago in Chicago. And I'm trying to make friends. And I have a new positive mindset. So I go to a comedy club and I'm very excited. I'm like, I'm going to meet somebody. I'm going to make friends. We're going to have a great time. And I lean the com- I meet somebody. I talk to them. And I lean the conversation towards LGBTQ stuff because I'm curious if they're comfortable with me and so forth. And they had mentioned that they've never seen a trans person before. They don't understand the process. They have no idea why anybody would ever want to do this. So I thought, well, we had a great experience in the connection together. We've been talking for the last 20, 30 minutes. And so I'm going to open up and be authentic to you. I'm going to share my authenticity. And I'm going to fill this knowledge gap for you. And we are going to be the best of friends. And so I tell him I'm trans, like excited, waiting for his response. And he just kind of, something went off in his head, like alarm bells or something. And he was just like, and he retreated. He was gone. He left. He said nothing else to me. Oh, you're kidding. Nothing else. I'm not kidding. And I'm telling you this in a, 
a gratitude and a form of gratitude, grateful tone mm-hmm. that this happened because I've been running from that for my entire life. And there it was. It happened to me right in front of my face. And I was absolutely devastated at the time. But it was important for me to have that experience. It was important for me to have that experience because I didn't want to, I didn't want to take care of him. And I didn't want to like to, to try and create this friendship that he didn't want. Like take care of the fact that he had feelings about this and try to change it and convince him that I was a good person and, and so forth. You know, some of the, I just didn't really want to do that. And neither did he. (laughs) He didn't want anything else to do with me. And my desperation, I would have thought that I wanted to change. I would have, in that, back at that time, I probably would have dropped everything and tried to talk to him and try to change myself for him. And that was all the work that I'd done from liking myself gone down the drain because I really wanted this relationship with the, I thought I really wanted a relationship with somebody, a friendship with somebody. And having them reject me flat out like that was painful, but I just didn't die. So (laughs) I learned from it. It was okay. It was okay. So I think, you know, Kara, the big part of getting coaching and me helping people is working through that piece right there, because that piece is very necessary for us. And any experience we have is to learning to deal with rejection and seeing the the benefit, the gratitude of having the rejection. That is so insightful. Um, so it's interesting. I mean, you faced your your biggest fear, really. You had, like, and it's amazing that you have that you know that you're able to cultivate this gratitude for it. It's so healthy. Um, mm. It's interesting to hear you talk about how you didn't feel the desire to change him. I'm curious about how you were able to like process that within yourself or, or how that, how that made you feel and, and how long it may have made you, um, how long it may have taken you to get over it, you know, or not to get over it, but Mm -hmm. like to get to the point where you could be grateful. It took, it took some years because I'll tell you, I'll tell you the truth, Kara, after the show, I was absolutely devastated. I was in a mix of uh, sadness and anger. And mm. here I, I leave the club and I try and laugh. It's a comedy show. So we were at intermission mm. and I try to laugh and I try to be like, oh, you know, la la la. And, and then but I leave and I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. And I'm like, what? just, yeah. oh, here I am moving from place to place to place. And again, it's these people who don't want to see me and my authentic truth and care about me. Nobody likes me. And I just hate everything. And it, it took some talking and some reflection and, and deep thought to get through that. Because after I had this intense emotion, the feeling of rejection, the sadness of letting go of the fact that I thought I made a friend, this thing that I've been looking for, for for decades, I thought I'd made somebody close. Well, was gonna, cause I changed my mindset. I did the thing that was different. I did what was different, mm-hmm. I changed my mindset. I went in and I talked, I was upbeat and boom, I get rejected and it's just, but I realized that I don't want to, I really don't want to change that person and they don't want to change me. I don't want them to change me. After talking, so this is where therapy helped. After talking it out, it's like, well, do I really want to be around someone who doesn't want to know me? Think about that kind of energy that you put in. And oh, by the way, Lee, you've done this many times before as a people pleaser. You have tried, you've changed and you have tried to be somebody else because you didn't want them to reject you. And now you're fully being yourself. This is the step that you need to take. You're fully being yourself and authentic with people by saying that you're trans and that some people just aren't going to like you or some people just aren't going to connect with you. And see how that's okay. See how you didn't, you know, get, I don't know, it didn't really take your breath away <laughs> in that sense. Mm-hmm. So it was the time and the reflection and, and talking it out. Mm, that's amazing. And, and it's so, it's so, it's so hard to go through rejection in, mm-hmm. in any form. And it's hard to remember too, that it's, it's really not, especially in a situation like that, how it's not about you. 
You know what right. I mean? Like you represent mm-hmm. something that they haven't been able to uh, reconcile within themselves. And that is, that is, it's so hard. I mean, it's because it feels so personal, you know, it's like, oh my Mm -hmm. God, they don't like me, but it's like, wait, they have work to do. They have pieces of themselves that they haven't been able to heal and reconcile in order to be able to accept that into their lives. Right, exactly. And that I'm glad you brought that up because that is one of the bigger lessons to learn about rejection is that it's not about you. And mm-hmm. because they have their own experience to to go through. Like if we go back to the exchange and we look at it now where where um I'm feeling more healed than perhaps they are because it was years ago. That might have been an experience that was just absolutely jarring for them. But of course I think maybe of course it was. They didn't say a word to me. They just left. It was a feeling that they couldn't express to me. So I think it wasn't about me for sure. Whatever happened, it wasn't about me. But because I went through this process, I can appreciate that I have to, when I have to reject people, when I have to do that, I know because I was in their shoes, I was the person to reject it. I know when I have to say no to someone, it's not because of them. It's because there's something going on with me and whatever pain that I think I'm going to cause them for rejecting them, they will learn from it. They will get over it. I get over, but they will, they will learn from it. They'll come to a place of gratitude. Like I did. It's necessary. Mm -hmm. It's necessary to happen. It's necessary for me because I don't want to, whatever I have going on with me, I'm not going to try and project it on them. There's something going on with me and I have to honor that and be more, more conscious of myself. Well, and I'm sure that it also, it definitely, I can't imagine that it wouldn't change the way that you, that you interact with people when you do need to say no, you know, rather, you know, because you've got that extra compassion. I mean, that's the thing that happens when (laughs) we go through trauma, when we have, when we have had our own experiences of rejection or of abuse or of, you know, whatever it is that we're carrying that was so difficult for us when we have, when we're put in a position where we have to um, deal with somebody where we could go that, we could go the way, you know, could, because how many times do we see it where it's like, oh, well, somebody rejected me because they saw me as a threat or different or whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Now I see that in somebody else. So I'm going to make them feel the way that I felt. Now I've got the power in the, you know, now the roles are reversed mm-hmm. somehow and I can make, they're in a vulnerable position and I could choose to, to flee, to reject them outright, to, to make them, because then now somebody else, now it's not me feeling that mm-hmm. way. It's them. But it's like when we've gone through that so often, we don't have that inclination it's it's more of like oh I've been here and let me ch- ch- make a different choice so that 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 person doesn't have to go through what I went through. Absolutely, absolutely. Like um, feeling that and recognizing that you feel that, recognizing that you feel like oh this is a this is a pattern of behavior. I'm here again, and mm-hmm. I want to try and do something different. Like I've noticed that this has happened to me. And so I want to make it different for this person. And what can I do to make it different for this person? And how does it feel for me to make it different? So I definitely do my best to use my words to leave people with some sort of closure, I suppose, Mm -hmm. if I have to reject them so that they can understand that, dude, it's not about you. It's really about me. And Mm -hmm. I'm sad. I'm least at the very least. I want to show some compassion to you. I don't want to try and hurt you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about what when we've talked touched on this a bit, but I don't know if there's anything more you want to talk about about the ways that becoming a transgender man has made things easy for you, easier for you, and in what ways it has not resolved what you thought it would resolve. Well, it made things easier for me in the sense that since I'm a really curious person, um, I had the opportunity to live life as a female and as a male. Like, uh, mm-hmm. So I've had interaction with people who treated me differently because I was a cis, man, cis woman 
and but also a cis male. So I remember sitting, this is just a random thing that popped into my head, but uh, I had a corporate job and I sat in a, I had, a, I was on the team and I was the only female on the team before I transitioned. So I'm sitting in the room and I remember saying something and nobody heard it. <laughs> I don't know why, but wow. none of the guys heard it. And then some other guy says the same thing. And they're like, oh, it's a great idea. It's a great oh, idea. I'm like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Does yeah. that, what did that happen? Okay. Oh. So then I transitioned and there was another female on the team. So I've transitioned. I look as I am now. I have the voice and everything. And I say something, well, they say something and I hear them. I know I hear them and I back them up and I kind of reflect back what they say. And they're like, great idea, Lee. Great idea. And I'm like, what? Oh what my just gosh. happened? Are we here? Well, yeah. this is... Now, I bring that up because I get to have this experience of knowing what it is to be the person who said the thing and the person who wasn't heard and all that. So I get more compassion, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And I've had many experiences like that where I could see where the males are coming from and I can see where you're, the women are coming from in this experience. So that gives me more opportunity to connect with other people and be more understanding. I get that's a plus, but a, a minus, I guess, would be that I'm new. <laughs> I'm new is in. Oh, like, right. I'm a new concept. You know I'm a new. I'm a new concept kind of thing. Like, uh, oh well, people don't really know quite that much about trans. We're getting more information, but what is it like to be trans? And what are your experiences? And uh, well, I don't have I'm anybody sorry. to talk to about that myself. Coach sorry. Lee. Can yeah. I ask, I'm sorry, can I ask you a question? Because Please. there was something that you said and I wanted to get clarification because I want to be really cool and know what it is that you said. But I think you said a cis man and a cis oh. woman. I don't know what that is. I'm oh, sorry. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to you. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful that you asked. Yeah, so a cis man and a cis woman, the cisgender is C I S, C I S. And okay. it is if you are born. Uh, whatever gender you're born at birth is that, or you're assigned at birth is what you continue to present as. So, okay. so yeah. So I believe that you're a cisgendered woman. You were born as female and you still present as female. You don't suggest okay. anything else. Yeah. And so okay. trans would be something along the lines of changing or presenting as. And we say oh, presenting okay. as because not all trans people seem to go through this physical transition that I've gone through. I see. Okay. Thank yeah. you for clarifying that. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad that you asked, you know, and uh, I, I, on that note of you asking, some people ask questions about trans people that that are really, they have curiosities rather about trans people and I appreciate that when they direct them to me, because I I was once on the other, what I'm trying to get at is I understand exactly where you're coming from about the curiosity. I remember just because I'm trans, I don't know a whole lot about, I don't know everything about some trans people and their own transitions. I'm, right. I remember when I had transitioned myself and I met another trans person who had gone from female to male like me, and then started wearing heavy makeup and feminine clothing. And I was just like, oh, I I don't quite understand, but I want to ask questions. But then those questions weren't allowed. And that was frustrating um, for me. Or I was, I was kind of, I wasn't saying the right things and I wasn't doing the right things. So I understand what it means to be on the side of wanting to know about like, having the curiosity about me. And I want to treat that with the compassion that it deserves so that you'll ask questions and so that you'll know me because that's what I really want other people to do. So that's what I want everyone to do. But well, thank I think you for that. <laughs> absolutely. I appreciate it. I'm I like, guess do that's... I ask? I don't want to be stupid <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or inconsiderate Please. or yeah. 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 See, I would, I would, if I could just take this moment and draw it back to the, the place where I was rejected that person that just not said anything to me and they left because they were so, so shocked about me being trans. We both missed an opportunity to do an exchange of information, of, of connection. Like they could learn more about a trans person directly from the mouth of the trans person. And I could have learned more about what was frightening or what was upsetting from them. 
We could have had an exchange there. But so many times we just do not have the words or or have the emotional capacity to recognize that this is a valuable moment to actually do an exchange. Like I remember asking some people questions and they felt attacked. Like it's not my job to teach you about me, but I'm like, it is a wonderful opportunity for you to share. Mm. Why don't you please do? I'm curious about you. Um, And so I felt like that, that compassion, that compassion is something that came even more transitioning because I started to have more questions about people who were like me, but getting rejected by people who were like me as in, as far as being trans. And then as far as being a black person, and then as far as anything else, we feel that kind of rejection, but there's always a wonderful opportunity for us to learn about each other, to share that information. But it only comes if the opportunity only comes if, if we're willing to, to share and have that emotional capacity for it. Yeah. Thank you for that. I think that that is so important. And I think that, that we can be very clunky in our, in our discussions because one, you know, it might be that, I mean, of course there are people who are insensitive and they don't mean well, Mm -hmm. but I think that so often people do mean well, but we can contort anything to if we want to be insulted or whatever, then we we can find that you know in, in not just in in the LGBTQ community or or anything. I mean, we can find that with anything. Absolutely, or we can choose exactly what you're saying. Where it's like, okay, that wasn't the best way to say it, but I'm gonna go with they just don't know better yet, and I can help them to give them the experience of, of connecting and kind of highlighting like, wait, we don't say that, or that, that hurts my feelings because of this. And, you know, it's, it's kind of easy to say that in a neutral, you know, when we haven't been triggered and, you know, we're kind of talking theoretically, but, um, Mm -hmm. but I, I think that I see this so much across the board, just in general, where it's like, we, you know, we, we want, you know, it's like we could, somebody hasn't said something in the right way. And I, you know, I do this from time to time. I, this is done to me where it's like, well, you know, I could, that's could be kind yeah. of insulting, you know, and, and, uh, but let's just say, you know, that I've done that too, where like, I didn't mean it the way it came out, but it came out really like yeah. <laughs> clunky. Um, and so I do think that if we can extend the benefit of the doubt, in general, you know, if we can practice that within ourselves to say like, okay, let me just kind of extend and try to meet them and, and kind yeah. of err on the side of grace and the benefit of the doubt. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I really like, I really like this word clunky because the mechanics of the situation, I mean, it's not going to be smooth because a lot of people don't have the, we don't have the same experience. We don't mm-hmm. have the same words and the same feelings about the things. And so I think allowing for some of that clunkiness to, to come through and not being afraid of it, like being able to hold on to myself and my feelings and recognizing that, oh, okay, they don't really have the right words or they don't know how, but they're curious and I'm going to help them understand my experience because they are asking, they just don't know how. They just don't. Yeah. Know. yeah. So, I mean, they just don't know of course they wouldn't know. <laughs> of course they wouldn't know because they don't really know us, know us, you know? So right. they're asking. Yeah. Yeah. And for, and for everybody, you know, it's like somebody's just got their frame of reference and it may be that, you know, they've had a lot of experience in, but we, you know, we all hold our own pieces of this bigger puzzle of what's happening here. Mm-hmm. And so we're, everybody has the opportunity to know really well and dive deeply into certain areas of life, you know, they may know a ton about animals and, or insects or, you know, I mean, just like, because they've, that's where they've spent their time and their energy. And they've like really gone deeply into that. But then if you want to talk about like, you know, space, you know, or, or whatever, it's like, they have no idea about like different galaxies or, um, I mean, just as an example, it's like, there's only so much time and focus and it doesn't mean that 
that they don't, that they reject that their space or whatever, but they just don't have a frame of reference. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, just to make it like a very benign example, but it's kind of like, if we're afraid to be, if we're afraid that we're going to, you know, say the wrong thing, or we don't want to like get ourselves backed into a corner or whatever, then we're, you know, it's like, well, I better, I better just play it safe and not, not dive into that topic so that, you know, and then we're just continuing to keep so, that gulf divide, you know, we're going to have yes. this chasm between, you know, the people who know and the people who don't, you know, and it, where it's like, well, I can't get over there because I, I don't want to say the wrong thing or. Exactly, um, exactly. And then we're, we remain curious and we make up thoughts or we make up uh, experiences about the people who are on the other side of the chasm because we don't really right. know and we're afraid to ask. So we won't ask yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we continue to be separated. And so, right. you know, to your point, I believe that it's really important for us to be comfortable with that clunkiness. I like the, I love this clunky word. <laughs> I'm going to keep <laughs> that in my vocabulary, good, but good. I, I love this. I love this because I think it describes it very well. It's, it's just not as smooth and to recognize how it feels for me to hear somebody ask me a question and on my on my lives I go I like I go live on TikTok and some people ask some random questions about trans people that may furrow some brows or may make people feel uncomfortable but I treat them as just curiosities and I will answer them because I feel that I have my own sense of self. And if they ask me questions like, are you a boy or a girl? Well, all right. It may feel like it's a question in bad faith, but I'm not going to treat it that way. I'm going to treat it as if somebody is has clunky words and they're not quite sure because I have no idea who's on the other side. And I do not want to make that chasm bigger. And I think that's a key that the key to creating friendships and developing connections with people is to be comfortable with, well, okay, I am me and I have all this knowledge and I'm able to share with you what I can. And if you don't have the correct words, that's going to make it, that's going to feel smooth. Then, you know, you may not want to ask me, but I want you to ask because you have that curiosity. Anyway, I want to close the gap. I want us to be closer and connected together. And by doing that, I realized that, well, if you don't have the mechanics, like I said, that's okay but I can kind of filter out who I want to be close to me. So if you're a person who doesn't have the mechanics, that's great. I'm glad to help fill that gap for you, but you can get as close as I want you to. And this is about as close as we're going to get. <laughs> yes. Well, this is what I love so much. It, the overarching um, message that I receive from your journey is this getting more and more and more into your own center where mm -hmm. you know you, like you know who you are, and then you can stand from, I mean, it's like kind of making me a little bit teary, but like you can stand in that and then it's, you can own like, okay, I, you're, you're stronger and stronger and stronger in who you are, but it's that it's first standing in who you are. Absolutely. And like knowing this is me that's that's the external and and what comes from the external is i i can't control that but i can only control staying here in my center knowing who i am being confident in who i am and knowing that 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 is what's going to bring to me the right people and it's going to it's going to affect what I'm experiencing and how I'm experiencing what comes from outside of me. Absolutely. That is exactly what I'm trying to express here. And I think that it is the sense of self, like stop worrying yeah. about what other people are thinking, how they're feeling and what they're going to do as it, re it, as it relates to how I'm going to feel about myself. Like, exactly. If I pay attention to what other people are thinking and feeling about me, I'm going to be stuck because there's so many other people and we pulled in different ways and be unsure about who I am and what I want to be reacting to everything all the time, believing that somebody's trying to hurt me when they're just trying to get information or curious and they want to know me. 
So mm. having that sense of self, it really helped me create connections with other people. And if I could, I would even step, take it a step further and talk about my truth. And what I believe is my truth and everyone else's truth is, is different for them. But the truth is your feelings about a specific event, action, or, or, or a person. And expressing your truth is how you feel about that event, action, or person, whatever it is. And when we try and hide that or we, we feel something, like instantly we feel something and, and we keep it with us. And if we're looking around at other people and like, is it okay to express this? Is it okay? Is it good? Huh? Hmm, I don't, I don't know. Um, and then if we do express it and people like look at us, no, 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 that's not okay. That's okay. You take it back and you put it back inside your chest and you just keep it close to you. You keep that, that feeling, that truth close to you, but really it's the truth of who you are and that will always come out. You have to get an opportunity to, to express it and let the world respond to it. You mm -hmm. might want to change how you react or what you do or, or maybe change who you who express your truth to, you might want to change you express your truth to, but it it is always your truth and it always is yours to express. We get in trouble when we start denying that. And mm -hmm. that was a, a big theme also in my life, it, particularly joy, expressing joy. That's one of the things that we hide, we hide, we hide, we hide. And I encourage everyone to express joy about whatever it is that you want to express joy about. There's so many people who see you express the joy and they're like, no, you can't do that. How dare you? Never, ever, ever, ever. And you take it and you put it back to your, close to your chest. But there are people out there who are waiting for you to express your joy. Wait, and you open up and you start sharing your joy and you're showing your light. And after you get over the fact that people are trying to yell at you, telling you, put it away, put it away, put it away. Don't be like that. There are other people that are gonna be looking at your light your joy, and they're going to be like, wow, I feel the same way. That's my truth. I see myself. And they'll go toward you. So all you really have to do is to be yourself, live your truth, and you're going to make lasting friendships. Yeah. And to take that one step further, it's that modeling of that expression. So it's like, oh, look, look at what they're doing. I have that within me too, but I haven't had the courage to, to open that and to, to shine that. So yes. you know, it's giving a permission slip. It's like that bravery of, of owning who we are and being authentic then helps others to be like, oh, okay, well, they're getting away with it. <laughs> you know? Maybe I can do that too, you know, in my own way of, of what that is is for me, you know? Absolutely. I love that <laughs> that's, yeah. because that's the mentality that was like, well, wow, they're, they seem to be okay. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. Kate, Caitlin, for Caitlyn Jenner is a great example for me. Mm -hmm. Like that's a great example of like, oh, wow. They're, I mean, of course they have resources and everything, but they look okay. They look yeah. like, I can't believe that they went through this, this whole process of the world believing that they were one way, even being on the Wheaties box and the ultimate Olympic champion to transitioning to, to something completely unrecognizable to those people who saw them on the Wheatie box and they're okay. So maybe yeah. I can do that too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Well, Coach Lee, this has been an, a beautiful, beautiful conversation. I can't thank you enough. Tell us how people can find out more about you and uh, and working with you and your resources. Absolutely. You can find me at PatternsOfPossibility.com, and I'm on Patterns of Possibility on all social media. And right now, I have this uh, 50 journal prompts uh, download, a PDF download that you can find at my website. So the 50 journal prompts is essentially, if you want to get to know someone, you have to give them something to know about you. And many of us don't know what to talk about. So these journal prompts are to help us get to know ourselves a little more so that we can connect with others. It's all about you expressing yourself. So you have to know yourself before you can express yourself. So in the journal prompts, you'll also see that there's something that's going to help you connect with people a little more. So not only will you talk about yourself, but it's how you're going to bring that conversation to the table. 
So you can find that at parentsofpossibility.com. And again, on all social media at Parents of Possibility. Oh, beautiful. Well, I have just loved this so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you just for everything that you're doing. The The path that you have walked, I know, has been a difficult one. Um, but the, the work that you've done on yourself and the, that you're then expanding that out to be able to affect so many people is really uh, a real gift. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kara. I appreciate that you modeled the behavior to asking the kind of questions that might be scary. So thank you again for having me. Thank you.